I like the sculpture of William Campbell. It's got a red dot by it, so that's pretty great for them. That means someone else besides Bill and me has great taste. Way to go, Bill. There was this great Time Magazine piece done by Mungo Thompson at Gallery Frank Elba's, and the gallery guy was really cute. I sat in front of the piece, and it looks like I'm on the magazine cover, but I'm not, but it's only a matter of time, bitches. Get it? I could stare at this piece forever at Halls and McKay Gallery. Beautiful work by Chris Duncan. See the orange glow at the top? Look at the soft horizontal lines. Reminds me of McKay Otto. Where is that guy? I always miss him at these things. Anyway, nice ode to Agnes Martin. Ron Vanderen, who was at Ambach and Rice, and I knew I've seen this guy somewhere before. This is Colossal.com. Have you ever clicked there? You totally should, because everything that guy posts rocks. Look at this shit. It folds the eye, and it looks crazy and dimensional. And while it is somewhat dimensional, when you see it from the side, it's pretty flat. These are totally gorgeous, and you must see them in person. Ooh, I'll have one of those. Dude, eyeballs. This piece at Dutton is eye-catching because of the movement. Here, listen to it. It kind of sounds like a hummingbird, doesn't it? It's actually my heart racing because you're making me talk so fucking fast. Eyeballs! Now this reminds me of the time I accidentally played soccer at the nudist resort. The gallery attendant had to keep nudging it to keep it active. What a good sport she is. The collection they were showing at Tally Dunn had a lovely sense of humor and a lighthearted feel to it. This one's made entirely of feather boas. Oh, will you look at that? Eyeballs with legs! This happened at Madison Gallery. The artist is making a commentary about how women are all blingy and fill their heads full of Botox. Nothing wrong with that. I don't want anyone to see the wrinkles on my scalp. If I could walk around with diamond skin like a mutant from X-Men, I would. I totally would. Oh god, oh god, oh god, this really blew me away. Gallery owner Todd Hosfeld, that's right, owner, spoke softly and poetically into my ear about it. The artist was interested in breaking down the information into the smallest bits that we could understand. My second favorite piece at the fair. What? Isn't this an art show? I guess there's no reason why things that get shoved into dark places can't be art too. Hey, I saw another piece at Row 2 Gallery that this piece should meet. Speaking of Row 2 Gallery, they were showing Josh Good among others. Aw, look at him talk about it. I'd love for you to hear what he's saying, but I can't because two minutes. Here's Jason Williford at Gallery Urbane. Here's Rusty Scrooby talking about stuff at Turner Carroll. Don't you want to know what they were saying? I bet you do. This is made with light and mirrors at Seagram Ellis Gallery. I wish it was my bathroom floor. Or maybe it needs to be the first thing you step on when you walk in the front door. Wouldn't that freak the shit out of someone? Then you could literally do it to him again in the bathroom with 100% less mess. Wanda Diary Gallery was cool enough to rearrange nipples on the wall for me. Something about me with a video camera makes people want to touch her nipples. These are Samantha McCurdy's nipples. The highlight of the fair was this piece by Tony Arzler at Gallery Forslum. He was saying creepy stuff and it was so cool you get to hear a little. That's all you get! There was a ton of other great work I can't show you with the time limit you put on me. Look at this. So awesome. Oh my gosh. I had a great time this year. The Dallas Art Fair totally kicked the Whitney Biennials out.